Hello, Paulo Synthmania. Tonight we talk about Ziff sockets. Ziff socket stands for zero insertion force. It is uh, basically a little piece of plastic with, with a spring mechanism and uh, contacts that go through where you can um, connect EEPROMs to. These were used a lot in the 80s for drum machines. So today it's very easy to change a sound, a drum sample. Just press a button on your DAW or your synthesizer or sampler. But in the 80s it uh, was not as easy. You literally had to open the drum machine and uh, exchange uh, the sound chips, the EEPROMs, with um, the ones that had new sounds. And you had to be careful when you installed them because um, you needed to make sure that the pins were all lined up. So it was a little bit of a slow process if you had a lot of slots. I have several drum machines from the 80s and most of them have ZIF sockets already. But I have a Emu Drumulator that doesn't. And I really love the Drumulator factory sound set. It's been used by a lot of um, bands that I like, especially in the Italo Disco genre of the 1983 to 1985 era. But I also like the rock drums, the famous rock drum expansion for the Drumulator and other drum machines that was used by also other bands that I love, such as Cocteau Twins, but a number of bands have used that type of rock chip sound. So let's open up the Drumulator, let's install the ZIF sockets, and then we can um, swap chips. And then we can listen to some drum machine sounds as well. All right, we are inside the Drumulator, and uh, these four are the slots of uh, the sounds that you can swap. And also there's this one right here, that's for the OS. As you can see, all these sockets are tied together and they have um, 28 pins, 14 on each rail. And Usually when you install, let me get a chip. So when you get a chip and you want to install it there, you have to exert force. You have to push it in there and uh, that's how it makes the contact. And once it's uh, there, you need to use um, like a tool like this to remove them or screwdriver. So it's a little bit, bit more laborious. So we're gonna install the ZIF sockets instead. And you can just turn these levers um, to open and close the contacts. And it also auto cleans the contacts. I like this uh, particular model with the double wings here. And as the name implies, there's no force. You just uh, basically chomp them in. And I might as well pop one here as well, although this one doesn't change as much as the sounds. So basically zero insertion force is just the first time that you have to use the force and then you no longer have to use the force. You just have to use this blip, blip. Right to you. Then it's just a matter of uh, plopping on the um, ROM chips. Let's start with um, the program ROM and just lock it in place with these wings. And we can do the same thing with the uh, sound chips. <music>
and voila. And as you can imagine, it's a lot faster than, um, than using force to install the chips and then have to use the extraction tool each time you want to remove them and so forth. All right, let's listen to some sounds of the drumulator now. And then we'll swap the chips with the rock drums. All right, let's build a pattern on the drumulator or as Emil called it, a segment. So we're gonna just delete what's, whatever it's on 21 right now. So erase 21, enter. And the pattern is blank. I just wanted to verify the quantization of autocorrect. Yeah, it's at eight, so well, let's switch it to 16th. And one more thing that I wanted to change is the segment length. The stock is uh, two bars, like many drum machines do, but let's bump it up to something like eight. So we have a little bit more variation without having to build a song. Let's record the bass drum. Let's do the snare. And now one of my favorite sounds on uh, the drumulator, the um, cowbell used a lot in the Italo disco of um, 1983 to 1985 ish. Let's assign some hats to the pads. And let's um, record the hi-hat. And let's do some uh, tom rolls. Let's call up the toms here. Let's get some claps going. And finally, let's put some crash maybe. And now you got the whole pattern. All right, let's change the chips and let's go to the rock drums. All right, let's swap the rock drums. And 
I made a classic mistake. These chips need to go in a certain direction. The notch has to be towards uh, the back of the unit. So I put this one wrong. We just need to reverse that. One thing I forgot to mention, if you get the bad message upon starting the drumulator, you need to flush the RAM. You do segment, erase, cassette, and it shows poof here, and you press enter. And um, it's erased. So when, now when you turn it back on, it shows good. All right, here we have uh, the famous rock drums chipset. And I already showed this uh, in um, the song that's arguably the most famous uh, representation of that sound, which is um, the Tears for Fears shout. So tonight maybe let's do something else. Maybe let's do some uh, another band that I love since the 80s, uh, the Cocteau Twins. And I remember buying the albums and um, listening to Cocteau Twins where when we went to the, um, the school trips, it was fantastic. Talking about 84, 85, 86. And so let's try maybe to do Lorelei from um, that album. It's one of the songs I like the most, also, also Pandora and other songs. But um, so I have the tempo set at 90 BPM. And I just wanted to change again the autocorrect. Uh, I had it at 8. Let's um, set it at um, 16. Because there is a heavy 16 drum roll in that song. And also, again, let's go to the segment length and set it up to eight. And let's try to replicate that pattern a little bit. Again, it's not gonna be exactly like this song because there are different, he programmed a song, so he had different patterns going, but just for the purpose of the demonstration of the rock drums, let's try to program that beat from um, Lorelei. And now let's do the bass drum and the snare. And lastly, let's do a cymbal. And here we have the final pattern of uh, Lorelei. Not 100% because, as I said, the song changes. So this is just one particular pattern. And of course, you can also use effects, um, a lot of reverb classic of the 80s uh, to make it sound a little bit more like the record. And this was a quick video on the famous Ziff sockets of the 80s uh, drum machines. I have a bunch of them uh, on other drum machines such as the Lindrum and the DMX, uh, the drum tracks. Not all of them are the same. Some are 28 pins, some are, the Lindrum doesn't have 28 pins. I forget how many pins it has, but slightly different, but same concept exactly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.